Ciao friends! Beth with Thimblehooks. Thanks for stopping by and like I promised last week we made my beer cozy my little beer mitten made this one but he needs a match in case it's really cold. If it's actually cold you need another mitten because you're not going to walk around with two drinks. Most people don't double fist it. So this one is the exact match to this guy but we just have to make a thumb. You thought this was easy? This is a piece of cake. So let's get started. I hope you're enjoying my video and my channel. If so, please click that button to subscribe. Thanks! So we're going to make the match for this guy. I thought these colors were just fun. This one, this one's mine. It's a fuchsia and this was, I think, crushed raspberry. You can barely see, but there's, it's got like little pink speckles in it. So these are mine because I love pink. But now we want to make the match to this in these colors. And these colors are Green Camel Stripe. I love this yarn. And this one is a Premier Just Yarn. Nice and soft. And this one is taupe. So those are my two choices for this guy. But I stopped on this pair before I completed everything so I could show you how it works and show you how simple this pattern is. So I'm just going to show you how to get started, the basics of this, and then I'll show you how to make to finish it up so you have a match set. Oh, now remember, when we're doing this pattern, it would be easier to see on here, the color that shows the most would be color B, like this color, this uh, my crushed raspberry. The color that's just this little stripe right here, that's your color A, that's where we start. So you pick the color that you want to start with, being this skinny color right here, and this is the one that you want to show off a little bit more. So pick this color is color A. So find your color A and mine is going to be turquoise. And we want to chain 48. So make our slip knot. I have my 5 millimeter prim. I love it. And if you watched, of course you did, of course you watched my beer mitten last week. It starts out exactly the same. But for anybody who may have missed it, we're going to start out exactly the same. We're going to chain 48 loosely. So we want to work in these little back bumps and I'll meet you back here in just a second. Chain 48, 46, 47, and 48. There's my chain 48. That's how we started the first time with my beer mitten. Now for the, our other hand mitten, we're starting exactly the same way. The base part is all the same. So if you already have this one figured out, you can jump up to how we close it up and make a thumb, but I'm going to show you anyway. So what we want to do is take our chain and turn it over and you see all these little back bumps on the opposite side of our chain. We want to work one single crochet into each one of those little back bumps so we will end up with 47, 47 single crochets in the little back bumps down our chain. And I will meet you back at the other end when I have my single crochets done. And there's my last two there's my back bump. That's number 46. And we want to do the last one right here, number 47. But we're going to change colors now. So we want to go under our little bump. Yarn over, pull up, but don't finish that stitch because it's time to change colors. And I'm going to finish this stitch with my new color and just drop the turquoise. Don't cut it, just drop it and finish this stitch with my new color. Chain one. Turn your work. At the beginning, at the end, anytime you end up way up here or all the way down here, that is going to be a stitch through both loops. Everything in between will be back loops only. So I'm going to start here with a single crochet in both loops and I'm going to mark this stitch. Mark that first stitch. I want a hand, little handful of stitch markers here just so you can keep finding your stitches. There's a couple of places in here they get a little bit tight. Alright, so now I want to do 45 back loop onlys. So this one is, there's both loops. Don't want both loops. Don't want the front loop. We want the back loop. So there's our first single crochet. I'm going to do a single crochet in the back loop only all the way down for a tr this row count or this stitch count for this row is 45. Back loop single crochets only. And again that stitch count for row 2 is 45. 
So I only have one left. We're going to be, there's my last one, there's number 45. And we have two stitches on the turquoise that are going to be unworked. We will deal with those later, remember. So remember, this is our base row that sells turquoise. Right? Row one is not part of our repeats. We are now into the things that we're going to be repeating. So that was 45 single crochet back loop only. We're going to turn our work. No chain. Just in this very first one here, we want to go under both loops and do a single crochet and mark this stitch. You are going to want to find this stitch a little bit later. And sometimes it gets a little bit tight right there when we don't do an extra chain. But we're trying to keep it from being too bulky. That's why we didn't chain right there. So now I want to do 25 back loop onlys for this row. This stitch count for row three is 25. So there's our first one. Now the rest are going to be back loop only up to 25. And here's 24 and number 25. So that was row three. I want to do the same thing we did before. We want to turn our work with no chain. Go into this stitch under both loops in single crochet and mark this stitch. So it doesn't disappear. Now we want to go down 23. So there was number one. So this time is 23 back loops only. There's number two, number three, number four, there's 22, and 23. And you can see right here I have two loops that are not going to be worked quite yet. Right there. So there was row, row four was a 23 stitch count, single crochet back loop only. So turn our work, no chain single crochet under both loops there. Mark that stitch. And now we want to work all the way back down again. Back loop only. All the way down, this will be a count of 43 stitches. It'll be 43 stitches total. First 23, when we get those worked, I will show you what we need to do next. There's 21 and 22. And there's my 23rd stitch, back loop only, single crochet. I can take this marker out now. But now to jump down here, because this row is done now, we want to jump down back down here to this part that's green. Right here, there's a side, side loop right there. Go through this little gold side loop and through the back loop of the next available stitch on this green row right here. So we're underneath both. We have three loops on our hook that way. One, two, three, yarn over, pull through, slip stitch through all three. That was stitch number 24. Now continue, back loop only, 25. 41 and 42, and our stitch count here was 43, and we wanna change colors. So on this 43rd stitch, we wanna go under both loops, Start our single crochet, two loops on our hook, drop color B and pick up color A again. I can take out my stitch marker. And pull that up. My turquoise is going to finish that stitch. So now we're done with all of the repeats that we're using for color B. So there are four rows. First we did 45. 25, 23, and then 43 all the way back to a place where we can change colors again. So we want to chain one, turn our work. So now that we've changed colors, under both loops we want a single crochet. And now this color A is really simple because now you just work all the way down to the other end. But right in here I'm going to have to show you exactly what you need to do to jump down. But we're going to work from one end to the other, 47 stitches. And they're going to be back loop only. So again, this is really simple. Once you have the idea down, it's pretty basic. It's really not very difficult. All right, now we're down to our stitch marker. So let's go back loop here. And then this one that's marked back loop only take out our stitch marker but now we want to go in this little side loop right here under this and 
through the back loop of the next stitch down here, yarn over, and slip stitch through all three of those loops. Now we want two, back loop only in our next mark stitch. Can get rid of that marker. Now see there's our side loop again, so go underneath this side loop and through the back loop of the next stitch in my turquoise, yarn over and pull through, slip stitch, pull through all three. Now we have one stitch left that is a full normal single crochet underneath both stitches. And so we're almost done with our repeats. Chain one, turn our work. Our first stitch is single crochet both loops and all the rest of them all the way down our back loop only. So this stitch count is 47 all the way back down to where you can change colors again. Almost to the end. 46 and remember for our last stitch number 47 we are going to not only go under both loops but we're also going to change colors. So you pull up your loop drop the turquoise and grab the other color, grab the instant classic and finish that stitch. And that is our repeat. So this first turquoise, that was just our base. Row one is just our baseline, so we're ready to go. And we have four rows for row color B, two rows for color A. So this was 45, 25, 23, 43, and then all the way back and forth two times with the turquoise. Do that seven times and I will meet you back and we'll build the rest of our mitten. But do that seven times. This one's almost done. Remember I told you I had a set that was almost complete but I stopped before it was time to turn them into mittens so that I could show y'all how to do this. So here's my other one with all seven are done. There's a right side and a wrong side. Is the right side is down, the wrong side is facing up because now we're just going to fold. Here's our working yarn, we're going to fold that over and we're going to close this up and make a thumb. So we have matching mittens but one of them will hold our drink and one will just keep the other hand warm. So we want to chain one here down at this end and then go through this very first mark stitch right here that marked in pink and through the other side that's marked in with my light blue. Go through both sides, yarn over, pull through, and single crochet. And that is our very first stitch. On the first one we did 27. We're going to change that just a little bit. It's not 27. This time we're going to do 23. I'm going to close up this side with 23. There was number one. Remember these are going through both loops of both stitches. So there's number, let's go on this side and this side. There's number two. We want to do a total of 23. 22 and number 23. That was through both sides. So we just closed up our cuff right down there by the wrist. We just closed that part up. Now I can take out this one because now it's being noisy and I don't like that. Now the next seven we just want a single crochet. I'm going to mark this first one too so we can find it again very simply. Sometimes they start to they start to get merged all together when we're gonna start when we have to finish our thumb. So there was number one, do seven, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now on the other side we need to find where our seventh skipping seven over here, so there's one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is where we want to start here because we want to skip these seven so we can work on those later. So seven on that side are not going to be used. We're going to go through this stitch right here and through that one we just marked because that's our new spot and do a single crochet. So there's our opening for our thumb right there. So now down to, all the way down to the end should be 17 single crochets all the way down to the end through both sides, through both stitches and through both loops. And here's number 16, I'm almost done, 16 and there's the last 
stitch is number 17 through both sides single crochet. Now we can take those markers out. We don't need them anymore either. So now we have to make a thumb and we close up at this end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish this off with a nice long tail, long enough that you're going to be able to thread a needle and go all the way around. So I'm going to just snip it down here, snip, and pull that through and we'll worry about him in just a couple of minutes. First we're going to do our thumb. So here's our little opening for our thumb. That's all we have left to do is a thumb. This is going to be so easy. This one is so much easier and so much faster than this, and this one's not hard either. Fasten back on. I marked that stitch so it's just really easy to find. Fasten our yarn back on and single crochet. Seven down this side and seven on that side. We're going to do that all the way around. and seven and then turn our work and grab these other seven on the other side. Just continue right down the line and there is number 14 so I did two sevens. I forgot to mark my marker but here is my first stitch right in here. This is my first stitch. So now I want to do that all the way around anywhere from 10 to 14 depending on how big your thumb is. If you have little hands, like I have little hands, I have little thumbs, probably 10 is sufficient, but if you have big hands, maybe go up to 14, but I'm going to do 10. I'm just going to continue working in the round. Grab this stitch. That was round number one, so I'm actually going to mark it. That was round number one that we just finished, and now we're working on round two, and I'm going to do a total of 10. There's my last couple stitches. There's my round 10 is done. Click. Now let's just give it a try. We try this on now and see if it's going to be long enough or if you want to make it even longer if you have big hands. If you're making this for a guy, it might need to be a little bit longer, but I think this is going to be just fine. Because we're going to cinch this closed and I still have a lot of wiggle room in here. So 10, I would say probably no more than 12 is going to be necessary for that. So now all I need to do is get back to my working yarn and we are going to slip stitch right in here in that mark stitch and fasten off with a nice long tail. Snip so we can close up our thumb and we have to close up this. Close up shop, that's all we need to do. So in order to do that the easy way, we are going to turn our mitten inside out. And even if you don't want to have a beer mitten, this is just a really nice set of mittens, I think. Personally, I love these mittens. They're really easy. They're easy for the sizing because of all of the ribbing that there is. They'll fit almost anybody. If you want to make them for kids, I would suggest just going down a hook size to a four. Take our long end that we did up at the front thread our needle and we're going to close this up. So we'll just go back and forth all the way around until you get back to the starting point. And we're almost done. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're using the same color but we just finished off and we're going to cinch this closed and no one will ever see it anyway. Now this is where we started, right here. Now let's just cinch all this closed. Now this one isn't as easy as this one where we had both ends and we tied it in a knot so now you need just need to secure these ends in with a little knot. Just sew it closed and make sure it's secure so it doesn't open up on you again. And that should be good. I'm just going to leave it down there. And now let's do the same thing to our 
the top of our thumb. Just pull the thumb through. This one's a little trickier because it's so much smaller. But you'll get it. Pull in our long tail that we just used. Thread our needle. And we do the exact same thing all the way around. Go back through that one one more time. We take out our marker now and just pull it closed. Just like we did up here. We just want to get this to be secure, nice and tight. Tie it in a knot so it doesn't come undone. So our thumb stays toasty warm. Go and snip when we're done. That's all you do is weave in your ends. You're going to have a few ends down here to weave in, but that's okay. Now let's turn this back right side out. So there's our thumb. Tuck him in. Pull this whole thing back through. And now you have a matching set. This one will hold your drink, and this one will just keep your other hand warm. So there you go. And even if you don't want to hold a drink, because you just never think you're going to have to hold a drink. This is just a really great set of mittens. Accordion ribbing through the whole thing makes them fit almost anybody. Just change your hook size if you want it to be a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller. So there you go. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you for supporting my small business. Please subscribe to Thimble Hooks and stop back soon. Maybe we can do some stuff for spring and summer soon. Yay! Thanks. Bye!